Hi there, it's Tiffany from Daisy Farm Crafts and today I am going to teach you how to make this vintage pot holder or hot pad. This um, came from my grandma Nicolina Liotta. She was an Italian immigrant in, let's see, I we're estimating she must have made this in about 1918. Um, Anyway, my sisters gave it to me for Christmas this year, and I am trying to, I'm going to make them each one and give it back to them. <laughs> so they have kind of a memory of our great grandmother, great great grandmother, I believe. So I have remade it in um, the closest yarn that I can find, which was Aunt Lydia's crochet thread, baby shower size three. So you can get this on yarnspirations.com and um, you will, I'll put a link for you down in the description box for YouTube or it'll be in my blog post. So they have lots of fun colors, yellows, blues, purples. So as I do this tutorial, you'll see the tutorial change all the sorts of colors because there's a little, a lot of steps. So I have some steps pre, pre done so I can quickly get this video together. But anyway, it's double sided and these are, are separate and then we'll make the two sides and then you weave them together. And basically we're going to crochet around the edge and do a little loop i'm going to change the loop this seems to be a separate piece of plastic in here and i'm just i just changed it to we'll finish it off with um, some chains and then we'll go back around with single crochet so anyway okay let's get started so the hook size that I am using is a very small 2.5 millimeter. The hot pads hook. are seven inches long and six inches tall. Okay, for the base chain, we are going to start with 48 chains. So I have 48 chains made and you'll begin in the fourth chain from the hook with a double crochet. Now work one double crochet into each of the next eight chains. And for this pattern, the chain threes, they count as the first double crochet of the row. So when you go back and count, you should have the turning chain is number one, and then we will have made nine double crochets for a total of 10. So each little section is 10 double crochets. And now I'll chain two, skip two, and now work one double crochet into each of the next 10 chains. After you have made 10 double crochets, then you'll repeat, work two chains, skip two, and work 10 double crochets again. So repeat that across the row 
you'll have four sections of 10 double crochet stitches with three two chains in between each section. Okay, let's go over this counting one more time just to make sure we've got it correct because this base row will be important. So we have the turning chain that counts as one double crochet. Then we have nine double crochet right here, chain two. Then we have 10, chain two, skip two, 10, chain two, skip two. And we end the row with 10 double crochet. Okay, so you will chain three to turn. And this is our first double crochet of the row. So it lines up and it counts as this stitch here. So we won't be working into the top of that stitch. We will work into the next stitch. So not here, here. So if you're looking down from the V's, one, two, three is our first one. So that counts as the fourth. We're working into the fifth. So you will work into the next nine double crochets here. And when you get to the chain two space, or the, we'll chain two across the two chain twos. Right up to that last one there. When you get to those chains, we're just going to chain two, skip working the two chains, and come over here and work into the top of the double crochet. So repeat that across the row. Make sure you chain three and turn. Begin in the second double crochet and can, and just follow this pattern. We'll do it for a total of four rows. All right, so here's one I'm working on in yellow and I have the four rows completed. So this is what it should look like. And now this is a row where we're going to add more of the chain two spaces. So for this row, you want to chain three, but then also chain two more that will count as that first chain two space. So essentially you chain five and turn. So normally, so this one, the first three chains are counting as the first double crochet. So that's right under this row. The chain two are counting as the first two stitches that we're skipping over. So you're going to come over here and work into this third double crochet or fourth double crochet, I should say, from the end and work double crochet. Now chain two. Skip two, double crochet, chain two, skip two, double crochet into the top of that last double crochet. That should leave you even and we'll still chain two across the chain twos below. So continue this pattern of one double crochet, chain two, skip the next two double crochet, double crochet into the next. And repeat that across the row.
Now, when you get to the final stitch here, you'll notice that our final double crochet needs to be worked into the top of the double crochet, or I mean the chain three turning chain, because that is a stitch. And if I fail to mention that on the previous rows, you do need to always be working double crochet into the final turning chain, just to the top of the turning chain. Now we will go back to chain three, turn our work. That counts as our first double crochet and we've skipped two, so we just need to work two double crochets around the chain twos. Um, we don't need to go into the tops of the turning chain, of those two chains. Just work around the chains. But do go into the top, underneath the little Vs of the double crochet. So work two double crochets around the turning chains. Oh gosh, not turning chains. Why do I keep saying that? Around the two chains. Work one double crochet into the top. That'll make sure we keep our counting all even and all the same. Okay, so for this one, we're going to keep that pattern going. So chain two, skip over here to this double crochet. And now begin to work around the chain two spaces there. Okay, continue that across the row. Your final stitch will be into the top of the third chain. Remember to leave those two chains for the space. Okay, so I'm almost to the end of the row. This is about what your work should look like. So basically we're just, you know, we're getting our 10 stitches back. Now, since remember we changed chained five. So two of those double crochets will be around the chain twos and then count up one, two, three. That's where you will work your final double crochet. It's always into the top of that third turning chain. And that's true of the other rows below too, if I failed to mention that. Chain three and turn. Now we are back to working the rows. So you will just work three more times and then we will do another row of this spacing. And essentially, if you look at just the gray, we're going to stop when we have four sections. So same thing for sections with, you can't see them now, but these are the rows that we're making right here. We're going to eventually be weaving in these strips of color. All right, so this is what you'll have completed and you need to make two of these. So just to review, we started with 48 chains. You start in the fourth chain from the hook. The chain three counts as a stitch. So in this first box, sometimes you'll have nine double crochets plus the turning chain. At the end of each row, make sure you work your final double crochet into the top of the turning chain. When we do these rows, you're chaining five and turning, and these are still worked with the double, um, skipping two in between. So we're just getting this little, um, I don't know what you wanna call it, window pane so that we can weave those strips in. So you'll make two of these. Okay, so then you also, 
after you make that, we'll be making six strips to weave through. And those are very simple. You're going to chain 48, same thing, and just work across one double crochet into each stitch starting in the fourth chain from each from the hook so no skipping or anything they are just little strips and then we will weave them through so 48 chains all right so we have the two sides i mean here i am new a, a different color i told you i'm making lots of these because i want to give them away to my sisters and my mom. So here's one in purple. So I've got the two sides done and I'm just gonna lay one on top of the other. And let's go ahead and these are the strips that we did. And I you know, started with the 48 chains. And we're going to just, I guess I'll start here from the bottom, but we're going to Put it down. And weave it right back up into this one. So we're kind of just working our way around that corner. Skip. I skipped two went down on the third just skipping the one coming back up skip two holes go down come back up after just skipping one and that's the end of that one So let's repeat that two more times and then I'll show you how the ones across go. All right, here's what it looks like when I have these three. And I, the reason why I, I wanted them, I'm not doing anything with these tails yet, is so that you can kind of get these all to be laying in the same direction with the tails at the end and all of that. So let's work the other ones and this section we will go in underneath and to the back start poke to the back and go wrap ourselves around the back and back up so it looks like that so skip one two go down the third skip one come back up and have your tails hanging out that way. Skip, skip one. There we go. Kind of get these to lay as flat as you can. Kind of. These ones are going to have a little bit more. This hot pad isn't quite as tall as it is wide, but we'll be okay. Okay, finish threading your other two, and then we will work on the border. Okay, here we go. This is what you what you should have. And I've been kind of messing around with these, pulling them and making sure they reach out to the end. Okay, now we have a lot of ends to deal with. And this is what I did to get around and make this project not so tedious, is I went ahead and tied knots into each of the end there just kind of loosely 
double knotted them and you could triple knot them if you're even more worried about the knots coming undone but just kind of loosely there and then I tucked them inside the hot pad because they will not be seen because we're going to also crochet over them so go ahead and that's how I because they do get hidden inside the, the middle of the hot pad and you didn't really see them so not and tuck <laughs> get them in there and if yours are just a little bit too long you know like I could, I really could trim these just a little bit make them even at least could trim one side and tuck them in there so you can go ahead and do that and get them kind of to lay down that way for you push them in there so i'm going to keep going around and getting them all tucked in now i even have tied knots these knots together these two ends together and i'm tucking them inside the hot pad and same with these got to save a little bit of time on this because <laughs> mostly this is just you know it's a memory gift and I doubt they'll even use these but even if they do um, I I don't see a problem with the ends being on the inside of the hot pad okay so we got those taken care of now let's go ahead and come up here to this corner stitch let's put our hook I'm going to start going down this side and grab the contrasting color. Let's pull up a loop. And single crochet. I mean, sorry, do a little slip stitch here. And then let's work a single crochet around those two posts. And I'm going ahead and catching this tail in too. Now we want to work two single crochets around the side of one double crochet or at the end of the row there. So this is a double crochet and I'm catching the double crochet on the other side, working two single crochets there we go now when we get down to this first where there's a um, I don't know what to call these <laughs> our double crochet little ribbons Let's make sure that we are also working underneath. We want to work two single crochets. And we're going to do a little pico here. So we're going to go five times. One, two, three, four, five. And slip stitch to the base of that stitch there we go and now let's work two more single crochets on the other side of that still catching the ribbon I guess is what I'm gonna call it okay so we're just kind of mimicking what she put on here was just like a little a pico stitch And now we're going to just continue working down this side. So go ahead and do that and I'll meet you at the corner.
So don't forget to catch your ribbons here. We got that. All right, when we get to the corner, we just kind of need to do the same thing that we were doing when we added in the ribbons there, is two single crochets. Let's make the little pico by chaining five. We're slip stitching. I'm kind of like catching just the top of that single crochet there. And then we will make two more single crochets. And that will be our corner. Now along the bottom here, we just need to work in between each post, kind of match them up. I'm going in between each post and catching that starting row there, like that. Okay, the same thing will be when we come to these ends of these ribbons. Just really make sure your ends are tucked in there. And I am working around, I will work around the post, not around the knot. The knot will go inside. I guess let me just show you here. making sure those are lined up there. So I'm going to see where the knot is. I'm going to go around the post there, making sure my tails are really tucked in there. Oops, got a little bit too loose. So post. Here we go, working two single crochets. Do the pico. Slip stitch. Two more single crochets. working in between the posts there. So, okay, so that's basically how you're going to be crocheting them together. I'll meet you when we get back up to here and I'll show you how to do that final loop. Just make sure you're catching the ends there and getting everything tucked inside. So hopefully you've got this all worked out, got your little picots going around. Made sure you got the end of each ribbon. So I put two single crochets in that last stitch that kind of mimics the corner, but remember we only did one. So I'm going to go ahead and do another one over here. And from this spot, I am going to work a loop. So I'm gonna chain eight. Okay, I'm going to slip stitch underneath that single crochet to secure it. And now I'm going to work as many single crochets as I can around this loop to kind of widen it out. And of course, this, if you want your loop bigger, you can do it bigger. It's up to you. You could do 10. But 
you want these um, single crochets on here to be pretty tight. So you wanna get as many on here as you can. One more. Let's see how that looks, good. And then just slip stitch kind of back to that, to where we landed here. I'm gonna go ahead and I'll go down there and let's tie this off. Here we go. Now this one you will want to weave in. We'll weave this end in. Okay, what the next thing that I am going to do, I'll just do it off camera, is I'm taking this into my ironing board and I will press it and get everything looking really good. But, and of course I'll weave this in. But here you go, here is this vintage, I don't know what I'm gonna call it, Nicolina's Vintage Hot Pad, so cute. All right, I've got a lot more to make. <laughs> yellow greens oh here's one that i did in the pink and gray so this brand of yarn has a lot of colors baby shower size three uh, there is such a range of colors to pick from for this cotton yarn so i haven't pressed this one either so i've got some work to do all right you guys you have a wonderful day